guys, welcome to Nigel's Modeling Bench. Um, more upgrades on this uh, HK Models Lancaster. This is more of a correction than an upgrade, pretty much like the, um, if you saw my video on the um, the correction to the tailplane, so that you end up with two upper and lower halves rather than two uppers and two lowers. Um, so HK have, um, have dropped it again here. What they've done, this area here, this, this scribed out panel here is actually the the panel for the uh, dinghy. The dinghy is actually in there and that would open up and the dinghy would come out when a, when a cable is pulled. Um, something I don't know actually, and maybe you guys can help me, if you look on the decal sheet for the kit, you only get one, you know, pull cord to eject dinghy, whatever it says. Yeah, if you buy the kit swirled stencil set, you get two. So if anybody knows, can they tell me, were there t actually two locations where that cable was exposed to be pulled? Uh, or was there just the one? Um, I'm afraid I don't trust the kit because there's so many errors. I don't trust the, the, kit, in, uh, the kit decal sheet to be correct. So anyway, this is the upper wing surface. So we've got a, a, a dinghy port there or a dinghy panel there. But we've also got one on the, um, on the port side which shouldn't be there. So that one mustn't be there. So I'm just gonna mark it with magic marker to get rid of it. And I'm gonna make sure that my magic marker is only on areas that I'm gonna sand. Um, problem with this stuff, if you don't know, if you put this on your model, you leave it on there and paint it with primer, it comes through the primer. Paint it with another color, it comes through. It keeps coming through forever. So um, yeah, it's a, it's a bit of a difficult thing to get rid of. So make sure you only put it on areas where you know you're gonna sand. So obviously I'm gonna fill this in and then I'm gonna to have to rescribe and re-rivet so, um, to end up with the uh, with the panel that, you know, just to play rivet in like this area here. The other error they've made, um, when you turn the wings over, they've got representations of landing lights, um, but in both wings. And unfortunately, for a 30 second scale kit, this is pretty poor. All they've got is just a scribed mark. Now, please tell me if I'm wrong, but I believe they should be actually like car headlights, actually sunken into the wing surface, and then they would have come down for landing, I think. Um, please tell me if I'm wrong. Uh, and But one thing I do know is there shouldn't be any in this wing, and there are. So we need to get rid of those. So again, I'm gonna mark those in red, in areas that I know I'm going to sand. So we should only have landing lights in the um, port wing and we shouldn't have landing lights in the starboard wing and we should only have the dinghy in the starboard wing and only have landing lights and no, no dinghy in the port wing. Sorry, there we go. So <laughs> I got there in the end. Um, so what we need to do is fill those and I'm going to show you how I'm going to make what I'm going to use to fill them. Right, so I'm going to make the goo to fill the seams. And what I've got here is some HK model sprue. Now, I would normally use my white sprue goo, which is basically the, the, the styrene strips and rods and everything you get. Um, I, would, I would normally use this, but the thing is, where the... Um, where the dinghy port is, the dinghy hatch, it's going to have to be rescribed a lot. So you could use super glue, you could use Mr. Surfacer, you could use sprue glue. I want to use this. I want to use the actual plastic that the kit is made out of, and then I can leave it for like a week, 10 days, whatever, to go off. And then I, when I scribe it, it'll just be like scribing through the plastic. Um, so... Because I'm sure we've all seen it, if, you, if you're not new to modelling, where you, you scribe a line across some filler and you do a great big divot in it. Or, um, or you scribe across some super glue and it kind of crumbles and you end up with a, a sort of crumbly edge where the super glue was. So it's best to use styrene. Um, like I say, you could use the ordinary normal super glue, um, sprue glue, which is made from... Um, which is made from the uh, the styrene strip and that. But I think this may have different characteristics to the HK plastic. The HK plastic is is known to be very hard. Um, it's not very flexible, whereas that stuff will be quite flexible. So what I'm gonna do, I'll take all the smaller pieces 
because they'll melt quicker. So I'm going to put them, I'm using an old Tamiya paint jar here which has been cleaned out. If you do use Tamiya paints, don't ever um, throw the jars away, leave them to soak in some water. They will clean out and then um, what I do is I, I pop the lids apart, I take the inner piece out and uh, soak them as well. And then afterwards, when it's all basically clean, I put them in a dishwasher. I let the dishwasher clean them um, and get a nice, you know, sort of lovely clean, clean jar. Now, pieces this big might take a while to um, dissolve. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to cut it up into smaller pieces. And then it should be much easier to, um, to melt. It'll, it'll melt much quicker is what I'm trying to say. Trying to do two things at once, you know, us blokes, we can't do that, can we? So women tell us. So I'm using an old pair of cutters here. I don't want to use my nice cameo cutters. And you can see there from how, you know, how difficult it is to cut. You can see how hard it is. Um, it, it is very hard plastic. So that's all I've got in there is just, I've just got like one layer. And I don't know if you can see that. It's just one layer there. So now I'm going to add some Tamiya Extra Thin. And I'm going to use a pipette for this. It's probably going to destroy the pipette. But what I'm going to do is just put about the same level of extra thin in as I've got sprue in there. So there we go. I did get my scales out to weigh it, but it was less than a gram. So I couldn't really see the, see the weight. But basically now what that will do is that will dissolve. And what you want is um, you, you really want a... A mixture which is slightly thinner than normal so you can paint it in and it will run into the seams what you don't want is something thick that kind of sits on the surface and then when you sand it flat you end up with a hollow underneath it where it didn't go down into the panel line you need it to go in so um so there we go so we'll leave that now that will probably take a good three or four hours to melt down and then we'll have a paste and then we can uh, use a fine brush Paint it on, wash our brush out in um, Tamiya Extra Thin, and uh, job done. Just one more thing, guys. If you remember when I did my review, I commented about this wing being very thin on this end. Um, and also, if you notice on the other wing, it's very thin on the underside. So obviously, when HK made the tool in, they've... They, I don't know why they did this. I don't know why they couldn't just make a pair of wing halves. But they've, they've made this sort of... This would have been a, a mould... So you'd have had a mould top and bottom closing down and then there would have been a, a section which inserted into the mould that would have been slid out either the side or the back, probably slid out the side. Um, now what they've done, they've obviously got some shift so the tool's not been very well made and basically what's happened is the centre core of the tool is biased that way on this wing and bias the other way on the other wing. So you end up with a, a thin upper section and a thick lower section. How do I know this? Because I went to Antics where they've got a couple of these in stock, went through them and every one I looked at was exactly the same. So they're obviously all like it. And there's also, if you want a large scale modeler, there's a guy on there who said he contacted HK models, told them about this problem with the top and bottom wings being thin. And HK models said, yeah, that'll be okay, it's fine. So, uh, yeah, there we go. So um, I'm actually going to do something here to stiffen this up because it is so thin. My worry is, let's just say it was a model show on a sunny day and it was sat near a window and the sun was shining through. Is that going to distort? You know, because it really is. I, I reckon that's probably only about 0.3 millimetres thick there. It really is very, very thin. So I'm going to back it up with some plastic card, probably put it in with some um, epoxy so that because um, I'm worried that if it's so thin, I'm worried that if I use uh, liquid cement, it's going to it's going to damage it. It's going to damage the, the, the surface. So, um, yeah, another uh, another disappointment with this kit. Right then. Um, so before we get on to filling in these uh, these holes, these uh, panel lines and stuff. As we're on the subject of corrections, updates and tweaks and wings and stuff, um, I just want to cover another <clears throat> couple of issues. One is, um, I was asked about the dihedral. Now, if you follow my Lancaster builds and stuff, you'll know that I've just done the uh, the um, Revell Lancaster, which is here. And uh, I've increased the dihedral on this one. 
and scaling it up it would appear that this kit is okay on dihedral it could perhaps do with a touch more but I think for the amount of work required and the risk of balls get up basically um, probably not worth doing I will revisit it and let you guys know um, what I think but I think the dihedral is actually okay um, Moving on to the wing tips, I've only actually got one removed from the sprue. They're not uh, universal, they are actually handed, so make sure you get the right one. Um, be careful of these sprue gates on these trailing edges because you break one of them off and it'll take out the trailing edge with it. Um, again, they've moulded these as this one piece thing rather than like a pita bread, rather than having two separate halves. I don't quite know why, but uh, anyway, um, so. This is my starboard wing, so this is the one that's okay on the top and thin on the bottom. But what you'll also notice when you come to fit the tip, um, what they've done, they've put the tip on a seam line. So, you know, to all intents and purposes, that should work really, really well. However, it's going to be an absolute nightmare to have it looking like a seam line and actually glue it on and not you lose any of the rivet detail I mean there is rivet detail there but as you can see it is right on the edge so it's going to be quite difficult so the first thing you'll notice when when you put this on if you match it up the radius on the front doesn't quite match the radius on the wing it is it's not a lot but it's enough to notice when it's actually built up so I would suggest just popping those rivets in with a sharp point and then sand that to blend that in. You'll also notice, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to show this on camera, but when you actually glue this together, the top surface has a step. So what we need to do is put some plastic card on there, on that flange, to pack the top up so we get it flush. And you really want to get it as flush as you possibly can and that way you only have to do some very light sanding and not lose any detail. Or, you know, if you can get it perfect, you won't have to do any sanding at all. Um, it's also worth noting that there is a seam here. Remove that seam and it'll go into there easier. There's a seam on the inside of there as well, I think. Um, but yeah, remove that seam. Just You can see I've just sanded it off. That'll make fitting that a lot easier. Um, on the back side, what we've got is a step. Same as on the top. But the step is the other way. So now we need to remove material. So either remove material from this flange or remove material from in there. Probably easier to remove it from this flange so that the wings, the wing tip sits down flush. And the other thing you will notice, if I hold that there flush on there, there's a big step on the other side. And apparently I'm led to believe by information on the forums, I'm led to believe that once you put these um, fillets in the back, it all becomes clear and all, everything all fits lovely. Um, I don't know. But if you look at it there, you can see the actual wing section is not the same on the tip as it is on the wing. So some work is required. What I would suggest is take something like a, you know, a, a sanding sponge like this, shove it in the wing like that. And then you've got something to work with to sort of hold everything out into place. And there you can see that basically what I'm doing is forcing the, the wing out to the profile of the tip. And you can see we've got the step there and then we've got the step the other way there. The other thing to look at here is the landing, the, um, landing lights, the formation lights. These are incorrect for a B1 or any wartime Lancaster. Um, you need to cut that out, it needs to have a clear part put in there and I believe from information I've gleaned off the forums I believe you have a red or green light in there depending on which side and then this one is white um, but don't take my word on that, Do you check your references but um, I haven't seen, I can't find a single picture in any of my references with these lights so I don't know where they come from so there we go, that's the uh, corrections with the tip. That's going to be a difficult joint to deal with. Um, and another thing that there's, there is a, a part which slots in here, 
goes in there and holds the wing section in the right place. Now, um, one of the guys asked the question, he actually got in touch with AK, HK Models about this fit, and uh, a guy from Finland, and HK Models actually came back, back to him and said, put that part in first. Even though in the instructions it tells you to put it in after you fit the tip, fit that part first, apparently, and it gives you a far better wing section to work with. Um, but quite why they did this, I don't know why they did it. Just, just didn't make two wing halves. It would have got rid of all this problem of having this this joint here. It would have got problem rid of the problem of the thin sections on both wings. I just don't know why they did it. I really don't. So anyway, um, that's that. Um, now we'll get on to doing this, um, correcting these uh, these misrepresented parts. Now before we start actually putting any sprugo in here. What we need to do is make sure we don't affect any of the surrounding detail. There's no point in filling up these rivet holes or panel lines or whatever and then having to come back and redo it all again. So what I'm going to do, I've pre-made this part here rather than embarrass myself getting it wrong on camera, as I normally do. And what I'm going to do is just fit this one over this centre line of rivet holes here. So that one's gone on there fine like that. And then I'm going to take some 10mm tape and put it either side and then a little piece across there like so I could have done that in one length couldn't I and I'm going to put a piece here and all this is going to do is keep the sprue goo out of the rivet holes because one of the downsides of sprue goo is quite um, stringy. It's almost like, if you remember the old polystyrene cement we used to use for making models, um, it's almost like that. It's uh, it's very stringy, so as you sort of come from the pot to the model, you'll end up with, with strings. Um, and then what I'm going to do is take some wider tape and just around the outside like that. Now you may be wondering why I'm not using my cheap and nasty decorated masking tape it's because this is going to be on here a little while like a couple of days at least and one of the problems with the cheap masking tape is it leaves a residue behind so i just want to avoid that and there we go now what i'll probably do now is cut a piece of paper tape that over so this whole area of the wing is covered because all it takes is one line or drip of this go across that panel there saying you end up rescribing and everything it's just not worth it it's worth spending the time now to make sure you don't get it right to don't you know to, to get it right so i'll go on now and mask up the other panel as well and then we'll look at the uh, actual sprue go itself and there's the wings masked up so guarded off with paper guarded off with paper totally sealed up around the edges in fact they're not totally sealed up there's a bit there which isn't sealed up and i'm just going to put this piece of tape that's lying here across that corner there we go. Um, so yeah, they're sealed up now, so I can't possibly get any damage on, on, on these areas here now. So as long as I go in from this side, I'll be okay. Make sure I stay away from here. Um, so the goo. I made this last night. Sorry, today is Tuesday, February the 12th, guys, uh, 2019. And it is about 11 o'clock in the morning, I believe. Um, so I made this sprue goo last night. I have to be honest, I added a little bit more extra thin to it just to thin it down and I feel that it may be still a little too thick. It's 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 a bit thinner than you would normally use um, but the trouble is with these fine tiny little rivets and stuff you want it quite thin to get in there otherwise you'll find it will just sit on the surface and when you sand it away you're left with a rivet hole. So. Um, it may just want thinning back a touch, so I'm just, just I'm just going to add a touch more extra thin to it. Now this is the beauty of making it too thick. Had it been too thin, I would now have to add more plastic and then wait for God knows how many hours for it to um, for it to thicken up. But when you want to thin it down, it's just a case of adding some extra thin and giving it a really good stir. Now it does need. A really good stir. This is not like stirring thinners into paint. It's um, 
it's worse than that. <laughs> but the beauty is you will find that in, if you don't stir up, there will be an area in the bottle that's thick and an area in the bottle that's thin. But you will also find an area that's just glue and no plastic in it at all. Um, if you thin it down too much, if you thin it to the consistency of paint, what will happen is the, the glue evaporates and just leaves nothing behind. All you end up with is just a trace of, um, of glue. Now I'm happier with that. You can see there, hopefully you can see, it's kind of, you can see it's like thick paint. It's almost like Revell paint, if you like. In fact, you could probably use Revell paint to do this, but it wouldn't be very good for scribing through or riveting through. So there we go. So what I'm going to do now, just put that stick to one side. I need to go and, oh, snaps it anyway. I need to go and buy some more cocktail sticks. I'm running out. Um, so I've got a small brush here. You can use any brush, don't worry about it, what you've got because you can easily clean it. And what I'm going to do, um, what I'll do is I'll bring you in guys, so you can see what I'm doing. And I'm just going to brush this over, over the area that I need to work on. Being careful not to overbrush it because what you'll do is just melt the surface. And if you brush it around too much, you'll end up with divots in the surface. Almost like you've been, if you can imagine getting some extra thin and brushing it on, that's what would happen. And this sprue goo is brilliant stuff for gap filling, guys. I use it for a lot of projects. If you're following my Lancaster, my um, Let's Build a Little Lancaster thread, then you'll see that on there, I've, um, well, you will see on there, I haven't done it yet, but the uh, engine fairings, I'll be using sprue goo for that. So put on a bit more than you think you need. It's better to have too much than not enough because it does sink back. And I'll leave that like that for, I don't know, two or three hours and then have another look at it. And then once it's sunk back, if you can see the lines through it, just give it another thin layer over the top. And then it's up to you how long you leave it. I'm going to leave this for two or three days and then give it a sand just to remove most of the you know leave the masking tape on remove most of it give the the glue underneath a chance to dry out and then um and then you can see about the string you see the strings laying across the surface yeah give it a couple of days to dry out remove the the, the top surface give it another couple of days to dry out and uh and then you can sort of finish it off and then perhaps add some Mr. Surfacer over the top. But what you're really looking for, you don't really want your Mr. Surfacer to be doing the job. You want this to be doing the job. And then when you come to scribing your lines and doing your rivets, then you'll be, you'll be laughing. And if you notice, I'm pushing this into the masking tape. The reason is I've got the masking tape right along the edge of that scribed line around this, um, around this dinghy port which is incorrect actually I was looking at some reference from reference to the material I've got and I did actually find a drawing that showed two dinghy ports so maybe that's where HK got their information from um, but that same drawing also showed well actually the same publication also showed one with only one landing light so where they got their four from I don't know so, um, and I have, I have checked as well since we last spoke, those landing lights are supposed to be kind of like car headlight looking things. They're not um, engraved panels and they do actually hinge down. So perhaps you want to go over and accentuate the scribing around the outside edge. Um, and... Uh, Drill out the centres and put some um, some of those headlight lenses you can get from littlecars.com. And there we go. And that's what I'll be doing. So I'll be drilling mine out and putting lenses in there. So there we go. So that's that done. Absolute doddle. Now you're probably thinking, Christ, why has he put so much on there? It's because it'll shrink back. So that's that done. That side's done, so I'm happy with that. Now to clean the brush, 
I'm going to wipe it off, wipe the excess off in a cloth. Then just go into a bottle of extra thin. This is a brand new bottle here, so you can see how much I'm not worried about it. And just clean the brush off in extra thin. And that's it, it's good as new again. So there we go, and I did all that off camera, didn't I? I've just noticed, sorry guys. Bottle of extra thin, all I did was dip the brush in like you would with thinners, just clean the brush out and then wipe it off. All we have to do now is leave that, like I say, for, I'm going to leave that for say, I don't know, three or four hours, have a look at it. If I can see where it's sunk anywhere, I'll just go over it again. Um, I may just go over it again just for, just for the hell of it. Um, I think we can see there, look down there, you can see I think it's sinking already. Um, so yeah, we'll leave that for now, give it two or three hours, just quickly have a look at it and then if I need to do any, add any more, I'll just add some more. Then I'll leave it for about, I don't know, two days. Just sand it to remove the top, uh, leave the tape in place, just sand it just to remove the top to give the stuff that's underneath a chance to dry because obviously it dries from the outside in. Um, and that'll just quicken up the drying process. It will probably shrink a bit more. And if you need to put some more on, put some more on, leave it a few days, rub it back. If it hasn't really sunk, but you just got a witness there, you can use some Mr. Surfacer or something. Um, and then you're free to go on and do your scribing. But I would leave it at least a couple of weeks before you do any scribing to let it go off absolutely solid. Um, this is the one down sober sprue glue. It does take a while to dry, uh, which is why I'm doing this now, because I'm weeks away from needing the wings. So if you've just bought this kit, if you've got it and you intend building it in the near future, you know, you may as well get on and do this now um, because it's something that's going to have to be done. And when it comes to the time you need the wings, you don't want to be sat around just waiting for this to go off. Um, so do it now and then and then you've got all the time in the world to let it dry while you're going on building the rest of the model. So um, there we go. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, if you like what you see, please give me a like. Um, if you don't, give me a dislike and tell me why. Um, and please like and subscribe. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, there's a, a lot of stuff on here, particularly Lancaster stuff at the moment. Um, I'm always open to suggestions if you want to see any how I do's or, or whatever. Uh, I've got a video going on for beginners. I'm going to be starting another beginner's guide soon. Uh, there's this 30 second scale Lancaster. There's a 70 second scale Lancaster. There's a 30 second scale Spitfire I'm building at the moment, an A7V tank. There's all sorts. So, um, and there's also another video I've got up where you can go and choose my next model. So you've got until the 20th of February to go and decide what kit I build next from a from a particular model shop. Um, so yeah, let's let's uh, let's all get together and and you can decide what I review and build next. So uh, I'll see you all soon, guys. Thanks for watching, and. Uh, Bye-bye.